Thank you, Matthew. I'm going to pass you now to Loretta. Hello, good, good afternoon. I'm the author of this booklet, which I've handed round, called Staying Put, an anti-gentrification handbook for council estates in London. I've also spent the last 20 years looking at gentrification. So essentially what Matthew's talking about is the hotting up, the speeding up of gentrification as a process in London. And of course, this process of gentrification is not new, and it isn't regeneration, it is gentrification, so we need to be calling it what it is, and we need to understand the difference between gentrification and regeneration. Regeneration does not displace pre-existing communities, okay? Gentrification does. Gentrification brings in middle to upper middle class people into working poor or working class communities, and it displaces those communities. And that's what I've been working on recently. Now, I think it's also important to recognise the different types of gentrification that are affecting London. So there's new build gentrification on brownfield sites where there's no population before. And some people have said this is not gentrification, it's regeneration because you're not displacing people who would have been living there because it's a brownfield site. However, all the academic evidence points to the fact that it pushes out people in adjacent communities. That any form of gentrification acts as a kind of beachhead and its tentacles spread out in the surrounding neighbourhoods and it triggers price rises in local housing there and it pushes out local retail, gets in high-end retail, etc, etc. The other type of gentrification that's hitting London as we speak is private rental gentrification. And in light of the housing bill, where buy-to-let landlords are now getting stuffed, this will be something that you need to keep your eyes open to, where big developers come in and build high-end private rental blocks, as opposed to selling them off to buy-to-let landlords or overseas buyers. Now, the one that really affects people and is affecting people substantially, particularly actually in, in inner South London, is the sale of council estates or what local councils are calling the regeneration or estate renewal. Now, of course, this is nothing more than another attempt to erase working class communities from London, a process that's been ongoing really since about, well, it's been ongoing forever, but it's been ongoing really since the Second World War, since the 1950s, as an attempt to recreate a central London that reflects the kind of middle class aspirations and ideologies of our politicians, of local government, national government, and indeed the kind of international aspirations of the developers that come in. Now the way that it affects us is that it causes severe homelessness, it causes uh, severe public health issues, people suffering from severe depression, suicides as a result of being pushed out of their homes. It causes uh, new trajectories out of London, so we're seeing relocation particularly to northern cities where there's some excess council housing. We're seeing relocation of council tenants to what have become known as benefit dump sites, places like Hastings, places like Margate. So people who have lived in London all their lives, who have friends, family, a home and whatever a home means to them, which is really important, are getting pushed out. Now, Shelter and the other organisations we've been working with have been very kind of cognizant of this, and they've found that Lambeth, along with Southwark and Lewisham, have got the highest rates of housing evictions in London. So I think that's something that people need to really kind of wake up to. So if we focus in on Lambeth, how is it playing out specifically here? Well, most of the people in the room already know that there are six estates, including Gressingham Gardens, that, that did well recently in winning its high cage award. All of these estates are earmarked for, in inverted commas, regeneration or redevelopment, really gentrification. The irony is that Lambeth has said, yes, these tenants will have the right to return, even though we know that other boroughs, particularly Southwark and some others, have reneged on right to return down the line, so there's no guarantee. Right to return isn't always what it seems, because, of course, once you've moved out with your family to somewhere else, your children are in a different school, you've started to knit down, create a new home for a while, often people do not then move back onto the estates that they were decanted off while they're being regenerated. Secondly, the people that do move back become part of a new community that is nothing like the community that was there before. 
This is a mixed income community, so social housing or affordable, whatever you want to call it, and most of it isn't affordable anymore, will be situated next to high-end owner-occupier housing. Now, social mixing is something that the government, certainly under New Labour, and slightly less under the coalition and the current Conservative government has been selling, but it's still an idea that's floating around the mindset, certainly of Lambeth Council. The idea being that if working class communities live cheek by jowl with middle class communities, somehow the social and economic aspirations, the middle class values, will seep down and make us all middle class. But it never worked with me, I never became middle class. So I think that we need to think about what that means. We also need to think about what that means in terms of living in those communities. So it creates a new kind of displacement. It's a displacement from the community that you're used to, the community that you felt secure in, that you felt comfortable in. So even if you have a right to return, it doesn't necessarily, it is not necessarily a good thing in those terms. Yes, so leaseholders, as we know, because I've just took part in two public inquiries around the Haygate and the Aylesbury estate, leaseholders are also very badly affected. And particularly in places like Lambeth, where there's a, a, a kind of correlation between a minority ownership who bought right to buy, there's also, some people are arguing now, a kind of ethnic cleansing happening as well. So many of the people who've lived on many of the estates who bought their properties through right to buy, being from Afro-Caribbean or African backgrounds. So as well as social cleansing, the other thing we need to think about is ethnic cleansing or racial cleansing, whatever you want to label it. It's correlated, but it's also quite important. And it's something that I think in the UK and London we don't think about. If you go to New York, people are thinking about it all the time. But here, because of racial politics are different, we don't, but it's something we need to wake up to. So there are different aspects of this. Um, of course, the other aspect of, of gentrification, we're in it right now, retail or commercial gentrification. So we've got the kind of redevelopment of Brixton Town Centre, we've got the redevelopment of Electric Avenue, you know, and these are commonplace. So basically they're trying to create the kind of Covent Garden in Brixton. Do we want that? No. Precisely. The tricky bit is there are different customers, different consumers wanting different things. So we have, you know, middle class yuppies who come in wanting this kind of consumption environment, a bit gritty, a bit exciting. And then we've got people who've lived here for a very, very long time who just want to go out and do their day-to-day -day shopping. How do we accommodate these two bodies of people? Because we don't really want to be kicking out everybody. We do want at some stage to try and have some form of debate if that makes sense. So we do need to sit back and push for what we want, but also to be open to alternative <laughs> ideas. I think that's quite the same. 